This is Devil's Advocates. we celebrate the Easter holiday, we're celebrating a specific person. They're celebrating the resurrection of someone, someone who has died and come back from the dead. Right. So if we were to celebrate a zombie day, that would be the day. I mean, and granted, Jesus wasn't the first person. The first person was actually Lazarus because he rose Lazarus from the dead. Right. So technically we're celebrating not just Jesus Christ, but all Lazarus the other zombies and all the other zombies well and on also zombie day, uh, easter when jesus rose from the dead several saints that had been dead for a long time were reported there were eyewitnesses that said these people got up and started preaching again there were zombies just <laughs> waltzing around preaching the gospel and that's what they are yeah and that's the thing nobody it's, nobody ever calls it that though <laughs> you can't call it that and the thing is we're not saying you know zombie is a very diverse term there's one basis of zombie they don't have to be corroding and and nasty and <laughs> and zombie bleeding and crap it doesn't have to be a walking dead zombie right it's what makes a zombie a zombie is someone who's died but then come back from the dead however a considered Jesus dead zombie would be an excellent halloween costume slightly <laughs> offensive yeah so well that would be great. so great well like Maybe sure like maybe just fresh, maybe fresh. Send us your Jesus. Jesus zombie pictures. Yeah, fresh Jesus. <laughs> so it was only three days. Well, this is like that zombie you see whole, that's got like some stitching, hand. but it's still kind of bleeding, you know. Yeah. And it's like there's bruising, and it's like dude, slight the dude was decay. just tortured. He's got holes in his hands and, and his feet. Crown of thorns and he's just on his head. His skin around. is Jesus is back. Well, but yeah, that was something I thought about, and I thought I want to share with you guys. I like that one. There go. Now I'm taking credit for it. Nice. I apologize. <laughs> I've heard the Jesus zombie bit, but I don't know. I haven't, I haven't expanded too far on it because I just, I kind of hit that like, oh yeah, he's a <laughs> that's what I mean, we, I we've defined. We've defined defined both things. We've defined what well, the Bible says, and then we've defined what a zombie is, and yeah. those definitions are the same. Right. Just by definition, I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> well, and you you had a point that zombies are. The rational concepts because History Channel just did Zombie Apocalypse, a living history. That's the subtitle <laughs> for it. And they went through all the descriptions of zombies in texts from way back, especially the Chinese and Japanese. Those people have armies of dead rising up. Same with the Bible. The Ezekiel, mm -hmm. I think it was, rose up an army from the dead and they just went out and slaughtered people for him. And that's just recorded. In our ancient texts, far back as we have record, people are like, yeah, no, that's possible. <laughs> that, that happened. <laughs> the very first media we have is about zombies and aliens, actually, but we won't get into that yet. Probably not. Or will we? Oh, we have to, I guess. Well, if yeah, Jesus I was telling you was that an alien, If Jesus was an alien, perhaps <laughs> jump right in. we knew how to come back from the dead or, you know, recre recreate ourselves some way. You're talking so, about, like, and, and modern, modern Frankenstein? Modern Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, basically. sort of like that. Was Frankenstein a zombie? He was the original he was, he was horror zombie. A monster. Yeah. They, I think they would consider him a monster, but technically he was pieced together by dead parts. So he, yeah. he is a, the walking And then dead. they reanimated his dead Cor parts with high voltage electricity someone jiggled yeah. so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm suggesting that Jesus was an alien <laughs> and he had the intelligence to come back to life hmm. an alien we're not you're not meaning like alien with you know green from no perhaps you know, he was a, like a, extra human. a, a traveler yes maybe, maybe. somebody maybe of another from land, another, you're saying another yes. organism that's in our galaxy <clears throat> But maybe human like you can do cross comparisons there in a lot of places too i was talking to a friend um one of my co-workers she's going on vacation pretty soon she's going to hawaii and she it sparked the conversation about where we would want to go and i said well, you know my next place that i go to it's going to be peru yeah and i want to go there because if there was a place that something happened that was extraordinary right something that's 
that a lot of people would say never happen. You know, if there was ever a chance that would, there was other organisms in our universe that has come to our planet, people say, I mean, what? It's got to be close to half of the planet would uh, would say that they believe in life outside of Earth. It depends. Would, I mean, we're pretty divided, especially now that the Vatican and they acknowledge uh, they, it. Yeah, they, now that they acknowledge they it, it, there's a lot more on the Catholic possible. side. But a lot of Christians are still pretty skeptic about it. When I was really heavy into the strict religious Christian scene, I had a lot of crazy things brought to me that I was pretty open to, so long as they didn't conflict with the Bible. And I say with Christians because I don't believe that I'm a Christian anymore as far as that type of belief goes. But some of my beliefs are similar. And the one thing that was really hard for me was the alien thing. I had this really narrow-minded view that there was only Earth because it was impossible otherwise. And now... Because impossible was going against what you're being taught. Yeah, and, and life was, was not spontaneous. It was created. But science does disprove that. And for me to just say, well, that doesn't count, or science has been disproved, well, you have to go with what's currently proved. And the Christian church doesn't like to get up to date on those things. But the, and oh. again, we're going to have listeners that are going to pop in on this, and <clears throat> we're probably going to have people that disagree with what we're saying. Right, and that's the right. thing. What we are saying isn't that God doesn't exist. We're not saying right. that. We're not saying anything. We, we respect religion, and that's why we live in this country, is that we, we, we can. But what we're saying is this is what is happening. It's facts. Science says this. We follow – you believe in gravity? Right. Well, science says that. And if you believe in gravity like everyone does – then you have to at least acknowledge science also says this. So if science says the Earth is older than a couple thousand years, right. we can't just pick and choose, oh, well, that's not... No. We're acknowledging that this is the way it is. To, in order to make your religion not a hoax, mm -hmm. which even as a Christian, I knew that it was to some people, mm -hmm. that modern society saw us as just sort of a, a joke. And it felt bad. It was painful. It made me very defensive about it at times. But I'd have to say that understanding that made me want to prove Christianity in a scientific way. And I definitely sought to. And there are books published on it and stuff. The problem is it's from their side of the fence. And no one's willing to try to get over into what the secular, quote unquote, and what they call secular world uh, views on the matter. And it's not that hard. It's really not. If you If you look at a couple of things about the universe and what the Bible gives account for and just to ask yourself what makes sense and you'll come up with some pretty crazy stuff you'll want to stop yourself from imagining some of the stuff it's the way you think of things will you know logically bring you to these conclusions and as a Christian you're like no that's not right and then no, exactly. You, you, yeah, and then, yeah, and then you hate yourself for it. You feel guilty because that's how they taught oh, you to be. Yeah. And then you finally face it someday, and that's what I did because I have to face reality. Yeah. So when we talk about things like these ideas, we're not saying this is what happened. We're just going on what parties have come up with. Right. The Vatican, uh, the Catholic leader, right. the, the, the Pope has said we recognize as a religion, we have told everyone that life can exist on other planets, that there yeah. could be more to our right. galaxy. That was so smart of them. As we advance as a species, science is more is going to continue to prove. Technology right. is getting better. Mm -hmm. We are going to be able to one day say definitively, this is what we have proven now. Right. And the church needs to be current with the facts. And Stephen Hawking said, just by sheer odds, with what, hundreds of billions? Is that right? Or hundreds, hundreds of millions of galaxies. I, I'm sure billions. I know. Well, at least billions in the millions, galaxies, possibly sure. billions of galaxies. Right. It's an inconceivable number and distance of space. Yeah. He says that just the sheer odds, it, it has to. I mean, it just makes sense. Right. So as soon as you say, yes, I believe that it's possible that there's other things in our galaxy. What if they were here? Right. What if they knew how to get here? What if they've been here? Right. Well, and, and even the, the things that he considers, too, like the probability of life over time, what are the odds of something happening? Even the math we had to, to try to calculate currently what the chances of life were, were not up to snuff with our findings. It showed that it was more probable, you know, and I think we've talked about this before, but we probably weren't at the low end or the high end of that, just because you have to think mm -hmm. there's probably more outside. We're not the best. I, I don't think. 
I've seen life expand a lot faster than this just here on Earth. There are some animals that can do some crazy stuff. That's evolution. Then think of how much more there could be uh, above us, better than us, and how much sooner. If life started so quick and that threw us for a loop, how much sooner could life have started? connections get together and talk about space stuff and all sorts of science breakthroughs and they had sent a probe out past Saturn I, don't, I think it might have been the Kepler which is finding all these new it's the like their farthest satellite they sent a probe they dropped one of the little probes it's got a bunch of them and it drops them off as it passes by these bodies and it sent one into the moons of Saturn ridiculous the things we saw it looked like Earth but with like a green cloudy methane atmosphere it, it's a gas but it's an atmosphere you know some people said that we thought oxygen had to be present in order for life to form we know now that's not true that there's actually algae down in the freaking ocean yeah it dies it if it touches oxygen <laughs> right? so who knows what what if life is gonna life just form and it's gonna tr to it's gonna try to create yeah. out of whatever chemical it touches exactly. and so it's gonna find a way to make life form out of that gas and there's who knows but yeah no i uh i remember reading an article about that online so that, is that the one where it was saying that the conditions on this planet are the closest no, to No, that's this is just a moon that they touched down okay. on. They sent like a little pod off into a moon in our solar system. This satellite that's out there that's dropping these things off, because of how far out it is, it's able to get the clear shots. So this thing, not only is it finding potential planets everywhere, which if you look online, I believe it's um, SETI. Uh, go to the SETI program, and you can search through stars, their lights, and their their planets that revolve around them and check to see if there's actual planets and and uh they're so cool. they're gonna they've they've used these algorithms to find livable planets so far are but, these rich people planning to claim land once they find an inhabitable planet well that's what you wonder because in our developing history that's how it worked right, right. but in even if there was things already living there and that's what we're doing we're trying to find planets with life on it what do you think is the first thing we're going to do as soon as we find life on it? We're going to take a sample of it. We're going to stick our grimy little hands into the soil, take a huge sample, find out what's good about it, and then we're going to say, this is ours. <laughs> and if there's stuff, if there's living creatures on that planet and they're dumber than us, you can bet your ass we'll be doing experiments on them, genetic, everything possible to learn about life that formed on another planet. Are you kidding me? That, Buy me a ticket. <laughs> that is what people would do if they found us when we were primitive and there's a good chance that they did and that's the reason why we are where we are now it could happen yeah and that's, and that's the potential the that train of thought that you just had that whole our whole conversation it's all theory but you have to recognize that this theory is plausible and right. if you if you say yes to any part of that that yes it's plausible you have to be able to rationalize that it could be the same somewhere else right and going back to religion real quick, you can't discredit God or say that it takes him out of the equation. But you also can't say it's a, he's a part of it fully. All you can say, though, is that your understanding of what God is is not right, which if you're a Christian and you're humble and you know the Bible, then you should already believe that mm -hmm. because it says he is beyond all comprehension. Stop trying to comprehend him. <laughs> so, um, and that's basically what Jesus' message was when he gave the parable about the wives and whether or not they should worry about who you're married to in heaven. His message at the end of that in most disputes was don't worry about it. Don't worry about the stuff down here because there's a lot better principles that are higher than you that you should be focused on. Look that's what Job. he said. Look that's at Job. interesting then. There are a great number of people who claim to comprehend God and what he wants and how he wants everyone to act and, and mm -hmm. what he wants everyone to do and what kind of life they should have. I think Penn Teller said it best when he said, you say God's indescribable and then you keep trying to describe him. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the point. But. That is the point. Well, look at Job. Same thing. Mm -hmm. He's had everything like taken away from him. You know, it's, it was basically, it was all part of a bet. Um, Satan says, you know, your, your follower, he will lose faith as soon as some bad things happen. Even though you are the creator and that you made him, he will turn against you. And God said no, and Job had everything taken away from him. 
everything was taken away from him. He got sick, right? You know mm-hmm. the story about probably better than I do. Got sick and everything was bad. And, oh yeah, I, but I, he kept his faith. Memorized that one. And he kept his faith. And he got more bad. It was his friend, right? Wasn't yeah. it his friend who who said something along the lines of, "How dare you try to rationalize something that we can't even conceive?" Right. It's so beyond you. What right. anything he does. Well, yeah, and, and the, the the whole message there was that you don't know the conversation going on behind our backs between God and Satan. And he flips it around and saves them. And there's some good actual life lessons, not just life lessons, but like universal lessons in there too. And what he's saying is don't, you know, there's some things that you won't be able to rationalize because it's so beyond you. Yeah. There's so many other things at play here. And as soon as you say, yes, that's that's what he says, that's what the Bible says, right. you need to be able to apply that to everything. It just You can't pick and choose. Yeah. Well, you want a literal example? Sure. That exact principle of Job. The, he gave it to us in this parable. Now, granted, I'm not saying that that Job didn't happen. In fact, I think it did. Job probably received a message from somebody who had information about that principle that was beyond what his the people of his current time could really get with their philosophy and with their teachings. Mm-hmm. And today we actually have a philosophy that fits right into that, and it's the law of attraction, which whether you believe it or not, it exists in the universe on some levels. Scientists have proven that. You be appreciative for what you have, and you let go of it. It's like holding a butterfly. You know, you if you hold it too tight, you'll crush it. If you open your hands, it'll fly away. And these are this principle, the whole construct of that idea, is actually in almost every single religion, and it's given to primitive people by gods. And that's to according me, to them. We're not. We're not right. And you're not throwing words. And these are their for accounts. They saying, say gods. gods came from heaven, and and so I'm, so just rationally. You take what they saw, something greater than they were, some people who knew things beyond and outside of what they knew, Mm -hmm. and had this concept uh, that would give them a better life. And they knew, you know, if they just follow that, then all the other stuff will come. They're trying to do the same thing. That right there. And, hey, that could be aliens, too. I, You know, I know that that's the big consensus in the ancient alien theory is that's what happened. And that brings it to light. I mean, it explains something that would otherwise be unexplainable because in modern society, our culture doesn't let us believe in fairy tales. You tie in a view that is based in what we understand now that they couldn't have understood then. And it makes so much sense. You can credit what we saw, you know, these stories that were passed down to us and other religions. You can date it back in in a way that would say it's plausible when we say the word alien it's really important that viewers don't think that we're saying that we're describing et right a green martian with antennae yeah, we're not we're not talking about aliens at like x files you know they want to come and take over the world we're not talking about that type of media alien we're talking about an organism that did not drive from earth had astronaut gear had the <laughs> intelligence to create astronaut gear and or, fly or, or a way to Wait. travel here yeah. I mean, that's, it's not that we, we've been to the moon. Yeah. However, we've if we discovered else. another planet, I, I'd be afraid that a lot of people with rifles would just go and take over the place. <laughs> right. What if the people there had rifles and they shot at us? Then I say we're <laughs> lucky that our gods did not have rifles and they were more civilized than that. I, I don't know. You look at the Indian religions and... There's a lot of talk about some of the gods that would fire a single projectile and it would take out a whole city. What does that sound like? So you've got... Sounds like a missile. Sounds like nuclear warfare, if you ask me. And you guys should check it out if you're interested in the in the curiosity landing and about possibility of life anywhere or being contacted ever before. You've got to check out Eric Von Daniken's Chariots of the Gods, originally called, and I think more appropriately, Memories of the Future. There's a lot of stories that that different religions so we're talking about different groups of people large groups of people believe yeah. and where people where beings and different religions call them different things some call them gods right. came from above the heavens and caused change they did something to impact us and and what we're suggesting is that if we were to take it literally and apply what we know it from science that could be another organism from another planet Right. right, and I think it's important for us to at least ask those questions, which is his point when writing the book, is to put the questions out there and not to say, this is what happened. You 
said that everywhere possible without saying the Black Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows him as the Black Green Lantern. I know. Yeah, so funny. you just have so. to say it. I knew very little about superheroes growing up, but I everything that I knew, I absorbed it when it was about the cartoons, because that's all I had. I got I was allowed to watch one hour of shows after I got off of school when I was a kid. That was it. I did not get any other time on TV, and there was one show after school that I watched, and it was the Batman Superman Adventures. Ooh, that was good. And they had the Batman and then Superman. Those Superman got so good. Really good. I mean, I like the Batmans, and actually I was talking to one of my buddies about this yesterday, James, and he said that uh, those Batmans follow the comics a lot closer than kids could have ever appreciated when they were right. watching those things. I am so glad hearing that now because I loved those and that's all I had and all I know is that I wanted the comics. I wanted to read the comics and I never saw a comic as a kid, ever. I had one friend who had comics and he showed me X-Men and I wasn't even really, I didn't know much about X-Men, I wasn't really into them, their games sucked on Super Nintendo so mm. it didn't go much farther than that and he planted the seed for Wolverine and me and like to this day, I think Wolverine's got one of the best stories. But that being said, dude, comics... That was like a world that I wished I could have been a part of. 18 years old is when I really kicked back into gear. Like, I, I always liked superheroes, and I got more into them as I got older. But once I hit 18, that's when I started reading comics again. Yeah. I got into Walking Dead, and I got into all these kind of the fad ones. And then I started collecting, and then I started selling. And then now Geek Street's the business that right. I spent a lot of my, my time on. And we can't go back without going back to the exhibit that we first went to together. The oh, yeah. Key Arena in Seattle. It was uh, was it Jet City? Yeah, I think it was it was Jet City. Your dad owned Geek Street at the time. Yeah, and we were going to to help to work for him. It was the first time we worked in comics together, and that's where the fabled picture, which now hangs in our podcast room, where the with the uh, we'll put it on our Facebook. Yeah, we, we need to. we need we're to gonna tag it, it for our Devil's Advocates Facebook so you can see it. Yeah, it's but, pretty cool. It's a Boondocks. Shot. Boondocks. It's a comic, comic book, book drawing, drawing of us as the Boondocks scenes, pretty much. You have to step outside the realm of. The first judgment of it that, okay, aliens, we think of Mars attacks. And comics, we think of little kid right. cartoon books. But, I mean, I'm holding a 2011 Overstreet. Oh, you know this, but to kind of give anyone the perspective of what kind of changes we're having in this. I mean, I wouldn't even really say it would be a, a hobby, but a collector's market. Yeah. So we have this, uh, this, this is an Overstreet price guide every year. This is kind of the... Uh, Comic book collectors Bible, if you would. They Everything update is based prices. off. Yeah, it updates prices and and it gives um collectors a current value of comics that are changing every year. Every year we're seeing changes in prices of just incredible dollar amounts, and there's no stopping it. Is the thing because as our culture is progressing, the more these characters and this history and art it just increases in value. And I can kind of give you an example. And I'm not even going to use a huge comic. I'm not going to use the first Superman. I'm going to use um, Hulk 181, which is the first Wolverine. Hulk 181. Yeah, so Hulk 181, we have a um, a 2010 near mint, which is like on the <laughs> low end of a perfect book, a near mint minus that's estimated value of $1,600. Okay. That's 2010, and then in one year it's 1700. So it's a three percent increase in this book. This book has increased three percent this last year, um, on the low end of near mint, but on the high end has sold for twenty two to twenty four thousand dollars, graded at a nine six to nine eight. Wow, that's on a ten point scale. Yeah, too. on a ten point scale. And here's a better example too: Amazing Fantasy 15. This is the first appearance of Spider Man. 2010 Dang. near mint price was a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. All right, 2011. One hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Right. That's an increase of twenty-five percent in one year. Right. Now, granted, is that going to continue happening? Probably not. Right. But those are the on the holy grail end of it. Yeah, yeah. We're seeing ch changes of twenty-five plus percent. That's for holding on to it sealed in a box. Like if you can, if you can, well, you pay fifty bucks, you get the CGC to grade it. They tell you for sure what it is. That ups the value right away, and then it's stuck in that condition. So you sit there. For a year, and now you've got twenty five extra grand. Yeah, <laughs> on and what's, top of it, what's interesting is that the the only type of books in the last two years that have lost value um, have been Western comic books. And when I say lost value, I mean on the highest end of it, thirteen percent. 
in a loss. Okay. And we're talking one genre of books that have been dominated by mystery, science, and superheroes. Right. I mean, Western books are, um, well, they're just not as common because they're you're not. You're talking as... about like Royal Rogers and stuff like exactly, that? Exactly, Red okay. Rider and stuff like so that. So those are actually really hot books. But they're, they exactly. sell. And when I mean that they dropped in value, I mean, rather than being worth 3600 they're worth 35 Right, right. I mean, it's, and that's, that's a, a, a big thing there. As far as investment books though, yeah, there's, just right. like anything, you have but to pick. They're still one of the, like, because they're so far back, I mean, these are like, some of these are, you know, the first comics, like those westerns, they're really old. The Royal Rogers and stuff that goes back a long way, and you basically have one of the higher end books. Anytime you find one of those, they're worth money. Somebody will buy them, and and that's the field that's going down. Well, it doesn't surprise me. We have comic book movies coming out every few months right now. Of course, the cool stuff's gonna get dominated. None of this would be possible without our sponsors, Geek Street Comics and Aventech. Check out Geek Street Comics eBay store at stores.ebay.com forward slash Geek Street Comics. Check out their key comic books and grab bags. And also, thank you to Aventech for putting together the website, making all the tech aspects of this show possible. You can also check out our website at devilsadvocates.tv, download all of our podcasts and shows any links or information. We would also like to thank our sponsor and guest speaker today, Tiffany. She is owner of Thrive Massage Therapy and supplied us with our studio. Check out her winter pricing at thrive-massage.net. to censor this <laughs> the all new all different X-Men 101 in the mutant heroes hour of maximum peril enter the phoenix phoenix Dude. man phoenix is the hottest X-Men <laughs> main story in every sense of the word that there is. Jean Grey. Ask any comic book nerd, they've got the hots for Jean Grey. It's like, oh yeah, of course. That's like the the response you get. Oh yeah, I mean, I thought you meant besides <laughs> the hottest chick that's in there. And then you've got <clears throat> her becoming evil, hot. <laughs> and then her becoming flames and like being able to telekinetically alter her own clothing which she does appear naked in multiple issues just because she's so evil and she starts seducing like every X-Men hot it's just good oh and she gets brought back from the dead zombies she's just hot <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude you cannot go wrong with this I love any phoenix that there is yeah that's a really good issue too it's worth money so. Have you opened this? Mm, Are you going what? to? What? Alright, I, I, I don't want to if you're not going to though. No, dude, it's, gonna, it's gotta be re redone. Oh, it's got a new, it's 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 a new bag. bag? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I gotta be careful. I haven't got tape stuck on a comic yet. Knock on wood. Well, not that I haven't been able to pull off without any damage. That the CGC would be able to detect. Yeah, well, and you know part of it too, I don't know, I haven't read enough of the back issues on Phoenix, I only have the 80s stuff, and only like 8 of those, and there's a whole run, there's a whole side story of the Phoenix, and um... It's a good story, <clears throat> I like it. Um, yeah, some of them are a little crazy, but you know what, I was looking at one of those issues, you've got like, fr from the 70s and the 80s and stuff... Mm -hmm. They had some really tacky outfits and some of them for the... Because it was the disco era. And they were... 
they were coming out of it and they were still dressing these comic book characters this way as if it was still that time and it's it's lame but you know what follow the stories because right. there is some good stuff in there 